It's no secret that our brains remember different types of information with differing levels of strength. If you're walking down the street one day and a grizzly bear pops out and starts chasing you, you are gonna remember that for the rest of your life. No study needed. And that is gonna happen because your brain is hardwired to keep information like that up in its archives forever. But what about more mundane information? What about a string of random numbers? Well, I generated this string of random numbers on random.org just a couple of days ago, and even though I've only looked at it once since then, I know by heart that it reads 5171992849. If you were paying close enough attention there, you might have noticed that there were 10 digits on that piece of paper. And 10 is exactly the number of digits in a phone number, at least a phone number in the United States. In other countries, there are differing numbers of digits and different formatting, but what is universal is the way that most people try to memorize phone numbers. Unless you're already privy to certain memory techniques, you probably try to remember a phone number the same way that I've always done it, through rote memorization. And this, as you are probably already aware, is not a very good way to remember things. I mean, yes, your brain does have to recall things on a pretty regular basis to build strong memories, but rote memorization alone is a very inefficient study technique, especially for numbers. See, even if you really want to remember that phone number, because it's The Rock's phone number, most of your brain perceives that phone number as what it really is, a symbolic representation of quantity. And that's not nearly as interesting to your brain as a grizzly bear chasing you down the street. But fortunately, there is a method out there for easily remembering any number that you wanna keep up in your cranium, including this one, which is incidentally not The Rock's number. I lied about that. But the method is called the major system, and today I'm gonna teach it to you. This method of memorization has probably been around in one form or another for thousands of years, but it was most prominently explained by the popular mathematics writer Martin Gardner in his book Hexaflexagons, Probability Paradoxes, and the Tower of Hanoi, and it works in three distinct stages. First, you take each digit of the sequence that you're trying to memorize, and you encode it as a specific consonant using a table of phonetic pairings, which I'm going to explain in a second, and which is at the heart of the major system. Next, you take these consonants that you just generated, and you smash them together to create words. And I'm not talking about gibberish words here, these are real words that you would use in everyday speech. And finally, you take those words and you encode them as visually striking, interesting images that, as you're going to find out, are much easier to recall than random numbers. Now, we're gonna do a couple of examples here in a second, but first, I do need to explain that table of phonetic pairings. Within the major system, every digit from zero to nine is paired with a specific sound that we make in human speech. And this makes the major system very flexible because there are multiple consonants that can be bound to certain digits. For example, as you can see in the table here, one can be encoded as either D or T because both of these have a single downstroke and when you say D and T, they sound quite similar. Numbers like six are even more flexible and have even more consonant pairings while numbers like four have only one. Now, I'm not gonna go through every single pairing here in the video because you can just pause it and look at it, and I am gonna have a web version linked in the description below, but I do want to note that not every letter in the alphabet is paired with a number in this system, and all of the vowels are omitted because these are going to be used for forming words once you do have your encoded consonants. All right, enough fooling around, let's do an example so you can see the system in action. So a couple of days ago, I went to the coffee shop near me to do a little bit of reading, and I started reading this book called The Dip by Seth Godin. Now, this book is only about 75 pages pages, but I wasn't able to finish it in the coffee shop. I got to about page 48. And once I got there and I was ready to stop reading, I realized that I didn't bring a bookmark with me. And because I don't like to dog ear the pages in my books, that meant that I was going to have to memorize the page that I stopped on. So let's use the major system to do this. I've got the number 48 that I need to memorize, so that means I'm working with the digits four and eight. And if we pull up our handy little table here, we can see that those get encoded as R and V, respectively. With those two letters in mind, we've got a bunch of different choices for words. We could go with rave, we could go with ref, but I am just going to go with RV. So that means that RV is the word that's going to get me back to 48. So all I need to do now is come up with a visually striking scenario in my head that helps me easily remember that word RV. When you're doing this part, it can be really helpful to also come up with a word that represents the context of the situation, in this case, the book that I'm reading. And since this book was written by Seth Godin, and since I know what he looks like, I'm just going to use him as the secondary image. 
So to match those two things together, I came up with a scenario where Seth Godin was hanging out in that space RV from the movie Spaceballs with Barf and Lone Star. And yes, that is absolutely ridiculous, but as you might know, your brain remembers odd and ridiculous things a lot more easily than it recalls dull things. So now I've got this really easy to remember image and all I need to do to get back to my number is work backwards. Seth Godin chilling in the RV. Okay, RV is my word, which means that R and V are my consonants. Translate those to four and eight, boom, 48. Now, at this point, you might be thinking, okay, Tom, that was two digits. That's super easy. What about that phone number you showed at the beginning of the video? That was 10 digits. What happens when we have a lot more digits to memorize? This is the point where you want to combine the major system with other memorization systems. And the first step to doing that is to chunk the digits you're trying to memorize, which means to break them down into smaller groups. Technically, you could use chunks of any size, but remember, you are translating these digits into consonants. So the bigger your chunks are, the harder it's going to be to find a word that represents them all because they all have to remain in order. Because of that, I think it's good to work with chunks of two digits. If we go that route with our 10 digit phone number, we get 517199289 and 49. Then just like before, we translate those digits into consonants and create words out of them. In this case, I went with these. And now comes the part where you combine the major system with another memory system because now you need to remember this list of words in its exact order. Now, there are a ton of different techniques out there that you could use to do this, one of them being the method of Loki, also known as the memory palace, which has you associating the information you wanna remember with specific locations inside a place like your house. But the method of Loki is pretty complicated and I should probably do an entire video on it, so I'm going to do that pretty soon. And in this case, I'm going to make up a story using my words instead. One of the really powerful things about creating a story is that our brains naturally latch onto stories. And because stories are linear, we understand the order in which events happen, so the words are easy to pull out in order as well. And just like with my crazy space ball story from before, the more outlandish and odd your story is, the easier time your brain is gonna have remembering it. So there you have it. Translate your digits into consonants, create words out of those consonants, and then create crazy stories that help you remember those words. And then work backwards from there to get back to those numbers that you wanted to remember. At this point, you now know how that one weird kid in your school managed to memorize pi to 347 digits, and maybe, just maybe, you can go challenge him now. Now, there are a lot of other techniques out there that can help you improve your memorization skills. And like I said earlier in the video, we're gonna be going over some of them in future videos, including the method of Loki. But it's also important to note that memorization is only one skill. And if you wanna be a top performer in school or in your work, then you need to complement it with other skills like critical thinking and problem solving. You also need to be able to build mental models that link concepts together so you can understand how they all affect the bigger picture. And if you're looking for a resource that will stretch your capabilities in those areas, check out Brilliant, a learning platform that helps people effectively learn math, science, and computer science, all while building strong and universally applicable cognitive skills along the way. Within Brilliant's library, you'll find courses on topics like calculus and linear algebra, and on math that applies to trading and finance. You'll also find courses on gravitational physics and astronomy and machine learning, and soon even a course on automotive engineering, which I am personally pretty excited about. Throughout all of their courses, Brilliant takes an extremely active approach to learning, throwing you straight into challenging problems that give you an immediate immediate reason to want to learn. And they back this up with an extensively detailed wiki, which you can use to flesh out your knowledge and any problems you're stuck on, and a community full of thousands of active learners who are constantly helping and challenging each other. I'm a huge fan of Brilliant's approach to learning, and I highly recommend that you guys give them a try. You can sign up and start learning for free today at brilliant.org slash Thomas Frank, and the first 83 people who sign up will also get 20% off their annual subscription. I wanna give a huge thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video and helping to support this channel. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. If if you like this video, you can hit that like button down below and also get subscribed right there so you don't miss out on any future videos. And you also might wanna grab a free copy of my book on earning better grades right there. Lastly, you might also wanna follow me over on Instagram. So doing daily stories now, and I'm also doing regular live streams. And if you wanna catch those, I will have the link in the description down below. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.